When doing my true crimes, I always make it a point to try to highlight and remember my victims. With the case of Samuel Little, he makes it hard to remember them. All of them. All 60 plus of them. Though he has claimed to have taken uh, 93 victims. Hello, I am Sean. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. I've gotten a bunch of new subscribers recently, so if you're watching this, then welcome. I really appreciate it. If you are returning, then I'm glad to see you again. Twice a week, I research a crime that I find interesting and tell you about it. Uh, throughout the week, I will post shorts, whether it's 911 calls or shorts to my videos, <clears throat> just to attract more people in. I try to make sure that the victims are remembered. There's a lot of victims out there to remember. If you're not subscribed, please do so. It is free. And if you want a membership to show me some love, you know, there's other benefits out there too. If you have any ideas for future true crimes, please feel free to leave me a message. I have taken many advices from people and turned them into uh, videos. So now on with today's true crime. Sam Little was born June 7th, 1940. And at that time he had the last name of McDowell, but he changed it. That was, that, that was his biological father's last name, but he was not really in the picture. So he changed it to his mother's last name, Little. He has had a confirmed count of 60 killings. <sighs> he has also confessed to 93 killings, but they haven't been able to confirm them all. This is the largest number of confirmed victims for any serial killer in the United States. You know, other serial killers that had claimed that they had a large victim count was Henry Lee Lucas, who he's claimed that he had over 250 killings, but only 11 had ever been confirmed. H.H. H. Holmes is suspected to have killed over 200 people, but there's only one that's been confirmed. Little has 60 confirmed. Which I'm not totally sure. I think a lot of them are unknowns, Jane Doe's, because I only have a list of maybe 30 names of actual victims. A lot of them just say unknown, but it shows a picture and where they were found. So there's a lot of people out there that don't know what happened to their families. Um, Little was born in Reynolds, Georgia, but moved to Lorraine, Ohio, where he was raised by his grandmother, his maternal grandmother, because his mother just uh, left him to be. Um, he claims that she was a streetwalker and that she abandoned him. Her name was Vesame Little. Uh, some say that she gave birth to him in jail. Others say that she was actually a maid. I could never find um, actual what she was. But she was not a good person. That's all I know. Little said that when he was a child, he started to have sexual fantasies about hurting women. He was in kindergarten and started actually thinking about strangling them. He has said that when, like, the teacher would come up and touch him on the shoulder or something like that, she would hit his neck, and he was already having sexual fantasies about that just from being touched on the neck. Uh, he soon started collecting true crime magazines, and these magazines talked about choking, and this was very exciting to him. At 13, he was put into a reformatory school 
and within a year he had 47 disciplinary reports. At 16, he was drifting around the United States. Um, <clears throat> I guess it's the 1950s. I guess it's it was okay at 16 to be drifting around the street states. States uh, doesn't seem like something that's very plausible nowadays, but. He ended up in Omaha, Nebraska, where he was arrested for burglary and placed in a juvenile correction facility. In 1960, he moved to Florida with his mom, and his criminal activity increased. In 1961, he was sentenced to three years for burglary. By 1975, he had been arrested 26 times times for crimes like DUI, fraud, shoplifting, solicitation, armed robbery, aggravated assault, and the R word. Here is a collection of mug shots ranging from 1966 all the way up to 1995. He saw the inside of many jails. In 1982, he was arrested in Pascagoula, Mississippi. I hope I said that right. For the murder of a 22-year-old, Melinda Rose Laprie. But a grand jury refused to indict him for the murder. And they didn't go into detail in my findings of why they wouldn't indict him, but they just refused to indict him for it. But while they were investigating, he was extradited to Florida to be tried for the murder of a 26-year-old, Patricia Ann Mount. Witness, witnesses, excuse me, witnesses ID Little, stating that he was with Patricia Ann the night that she, or the night before she disappeared. They were at a bar, all hot and heavy, and people saw him with her. The jury did not trust these witnesses and Little was acquitted of the Florida murder in uh, January of 1984. So here he just slipped through two different murders and was free. You know, having enough of the East Coast, Little decided to move to California San Diego, to be exact. But this was not the end of his troubles. He was arrested again in October 1984. This time was for kidnapping, beating, and strangling 22-year-old Lori Barrows. She survived. A month after his arrest, he was found in the backseat of a car with an unconscious woman. He must have been out on bond or something. I'm, I'm not sure they don't say how he was out, so I'm assuming Bond. The woman in the car had been beaten severely and strangled. They were also found in the same location where he attempted to kill Barrows. So for both these crimes, he only served two and a half years in prison. Yeah, that, that's just ridiculous. Two and a half years in prison. He was released February of 1987 when he moved to L.A. and committed more murders. He was finally arrested on September 5th, 2012 in Louisville, Kentucky. He was extradited to California for narco narcotic charges. But using DNA testing, they found that he was involved in the murders of Linda Alfort from July 13th, 1987. Guadalupe Apodaca, Apodaca, I hope I said that right, from September 3rd, 1987. And Audrey Everett killed August 14th, 1989. They were all killed in Los Angeles. He was finally charged on January. Third, uh, sorry, January 7th of 2013, he was tried for the murder of Alford Nelson and Apodaca 
the prosecution used witnesses of people that he had attacked throughout his criminal history. The ones that lived, anyway. Um, he was found guilty on September 25th, 2014, and sentenced to life in prison without parole. This is where all the stuff starts getting so condensed and confusing and if I miss something, I am so sorry. There was a lot of data there. When he was when he was sentenced and sent to uh, prison, at this time, Little still claimed to be innocent. But on November 9th, 2018, he started to confess. The first person he confessed about was the 1996 death, death of Melissa Thomas. And on November 13th, he was charged with the murder of Denise Christie Brothers of Texas in 1994. During his confessions, he confessed to other killings. Fredonia Smith, Dorothy Richards, Daisy McGuire, and then he confessed to Julia Critchfield, Nancy Carol Stevens, Evelyn Weston, and Rosie Hill. Also in December of 2018, he was indicted on the death of Martha Cunningham and Linda Sue Bonds. He pled guilty of the murder and was given another life sentence. On the same day, he then confessed to dozens of other murders in Texas. He claimed to have killed, like I said, 93 women across 14 states. His murder spree lasted from 1970 all the way up to 2005. Little had kind of like a photographic memory and he drew many of these women that he killed. He didn't always know their names, but he remembered what their faces looked like. That's how they confirmed at least 60 of the victims. Now, out of the 60 victims, like I said before, many of them were Jane Doe's, and no one knows their names. So it makes it really difficult for me, since I always want to make it a point to remember the victims. With all this multitude of victims, it's hard for me to uh, remember them. I am, you know showing lots of pictures, the drawings and things like that. That's the best I can do. I want to state that I'm not going to explain all the murders in depth. You know, it was pretty much the same with each of them. He beat them, he strangled him, strangled them, and he R-worded them. Um, some more severely than others, but I, I don't want to do that. And, uh, YouTube doesn't want me to do that. So I have to, I guess, uh, be cautious. Now I could not find pictures of all the victims either. I did my best searching their names, and I could not find all of them. The best I can do, though, is list the victims' names that I do know. Like I said, there's so many Jane Doe's, and I, yeah, that just makes it really confusing. But some of his actual victims were Annie Lee Stewart, 32, Mary Jo Payton, 21, Zena Marie Jones, 30, Rose Everett, 32. Thought to be his first victim is Mary Jo Bro Brosley, 33, Sarah Brown with an unknown name, or unknown age, Yvonne Pleese, who was around 20, Clara Birdlong, who was around 40, Patricia Parker, who was 25, Melinda LaPree, who was 22, Linda Bennett, 
25, Francis Campbell, 23, Yolanda Jones, 26, and Roberta uh, Tanrich, who has an unknown name. I'm also including this video. It's basically from the FBI uh, VICAP website. These are drawings of a lot of his unknown victims. If you recognize any of them, contact your local law enforcement or to the FBI. Uh, these women deserve a name. They deserve closure. There's family out there that know who they are and are missing them. And they never knew whatever actually happened to their daughter, their mother, their sister. It's a sad situation and they need to be laid to rest. They need to be remembered. Also on that FBI VICAP website, there's a ton of video confessions from Little talking about different victims. You can find it on there. And I'm just showing a part of a video uh, where he murdered, or he talks about murdering a transgender female. And he can't remember if it was 1971 or 1972. And this was in Miami, Florida. So. Tell me about Mary Ann. She's what you nowadays they call a transgender. Mary Ann's about five, seven, seven, five, six. She weighed about 135. Okay. One, maybe 140. But she was 19. No, I'm Miami, down in Liberty City. I seen her down at the Guar on 17th Avenue. And she had on a short cream miniskirt. <coughs> cream and red. So then this opportunity popped up. Mm -hmm. Take her to the store. Right. Instead of me bringing her back to the apartment, I went down to 27th Street. That's going down to uh, Fort Lauderdale, mm -hmm. called the, the Alligator Alley. It, it turns into, it runs in the Alligator Alley. Right. But the further out you get, the further you get out of Miami. On December 30th, 2020, Little died. No cause of death was ever listed, but he did have history of diabetes, heart problems, and other health issues. The horror of Sam Little had ended, but did he really give up all of his victims? And were there more? I'm sure that we could make this much longer going into depth about each of the victims and where they're found, how they were found, things like that. But it's too gruesome to talk about. And like I said, YouTube doesn't like hearing all that stuff. So I'm trying to keep this as PG, possibly PG-13 as possible. So that's the story of uh, Sam Little and his 93 victims. It's, I don't know, it's sad. Because you, you listen to that video and he has, he sounds like such a calm, nice guy, but all that violence and death that's surrounding him, there had to be something extremely wrong with him. So I will just leave it there. Thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed, please do so. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. I love you all. I'll see you soon. Bye.